Come on, kids. We got the truck figured out. We got the trailer set up. Yep, come on down. Good sit. I got my station over here set up. I'm working on it and building a uh, place to do videos because it's been a while. But first, I gotta take care of something. Because, oh my god, I gotta get rid of that. Man, I have been away for a while. Where did I leave off? I think I was in St. Augustine. Yeah, now I remember. St. Augustine. And we were just getting ready to leave. Man, that was way back around the time of my birthday. It is April 23rd. We're at the base of the lighthouse in St. Augustine. And we've been here for long enough. Today's the day that we are preparing to move. At this point in the journey, I'd already replaced both engines, but I still couldn't get one of them to stop leaking water. It was a routine to have to fill it up every time I wanted to run it. But everything else seemed to be coming together in its time. The boat's starting to look kind of ship shape. I mean, the paint's not the best and it's a little dirty, but it's organized for the most part. I got homes for the generators that are kind of out of the way. And gas cans and my lines and my little things for the shades. and. Everything up here, this is going to be a shock absorber for the anchor. But yeah, the dashboards are looking empty-ish. Pretty good, you know. That's uh, that's nice. When I'm sitting here later on, I'll be able to see over the dash. I moved the kayak over, and you can see I've got the chart plotter connected. The chart plotter upstairs is connected to the iPad. And I can manipulate it from down here. I have to keep an eye on the motors. I can drive from down here, I can see the chart, make sure I'm in the channel, uh, make sure my depths are good. The temperature seems okay, it seems to be holding. I think I let that run for another 10 minutes or so. Just sitting here idle. And then we'll uh, untie and get underway. But yeah, everything is good. I mean, I've got my stores of water filled back up both of them so there's plenty of water for the dogs and me I sprayed the bicycle down yeah so uh, it doesn't corrode too badly the cans too that's what that's that sheen is it's like an anti-corrosion stuff and those are all full so we got full tanks plenty of water everything's good except uh, you know those motors which are uh, giving me uh, a heart attack. <laughs> Come a long way since I left Tampa because now I can keep an eye on those gauges. I'm learning as I go, but uh, we're making progress. As long as I don't let these uh, motors overheat because of a bad exchanger or some uh, screw up on my part, then you know, things should get more comfortable the longer we're underway. It's the hard part when you got with a 40 year old boat and no mechanic but yourself. All right, I think we're ready to go. There'll always be a reason not to go because of this or that, but at some point you just need to go anyways. Uh, St. Augustine, time to say goodbye. Already taking one line off. Let's take the second one loose. That line is now free. I got a hand on this. And take this line here. There you go. Up the dog ladder. And we are free. Bye, Morning Ball. 
this one is going up slightly. Mike and I had just recently done some changes to my motors and the test was going to be to drive it about 40 miles from St. Augustine to Jacksonville. Hopefully the worst case scenario, it gets hot, we shut it off, or we stop, we let it cool down, or I just run with one motor, let it cool down. Best case scenario is I bump it up and it holds temperature until we get to Jacksonville. And who knows, maybe I'll find somebody who can fix that heat exchanger. It's like six and a half feet here. <laughs> Probably ought to get over to the channel. Keep an eye out for shoals and whatnot. Let's bump it up just a bit. The temperature's going up. just over 180 or approaching it actually and now it went back down and I lost my depth finder again son of a bitch it works man I do have breadcrumbs so I gotta tell you man struggle and struggle and struggle to keep things uh, working and that's all you can do is help things stay together you know That just seems to be the lament of all boat owners, that if you want to actually take it out and use it, you have to expect that at some point, something is going to break. Thank goodness for this chart plotter. I mean, this is a marked channel, but... If there's anything that's making me feel a little better, the fact that the chart plotter's working. Here the chart shows us leaving the salt run crossing the St. Augustine Inlet, which is big, a lot of boats, a lot of current, and beyond that is a bridge under which the ICW continues really, really far for a long ways. I just chugged along one mile at a time. Beach Pier, uh, wherever that is, it's right there. <laughs> I know exactly where that is. Temperatures are holding. I am uh, a little tense, but uh, so far, so good. Let's hope it stays that way. It seemed like every time I passed underneath one of these bridges, I couldn't help but think that I'd much rather be floating on a kayak and sheep's head fishing. But when you're cruising on a big boat, like today, that just was not going to happen. And I got the motors working compared to what they're normally doing. They're working a little harder than normal. And we're only getting six and a half miles an hour. You got a big fat boat plowing through the water. That's kind of what you get. You get to be at the mercy of the tides. I'll take it a good time. It's coming up under six. And that's why I made sure to stow everything downstairs as best as I could. We don't lose anything. This guy's gonna make a close pass. Holy holy! Yikes! That's a big weight-making machine right there. I had one of my laptops slide off a table and fall onto the floor not long before this. It was still fresh in my memory. stress you out but then there are things like that that remind you that things could always be worse Let's see if I can get a picture of that
that boat probably had a lot of passengers who were having fun and a captain who also wanted to have fun and not worry like I do. I suppose a little bit of worry every now and again is good, especially if you're going to be driving a boat by yourself. I mean, there's navigating to do and all kinds of responsibilities. There's things to watch out for, like this crazy guy with three motors. I mean, what kind of crazy person has three motors? Uh, that aside, yes, there was a lot of navigating to do. The ICW here is rather straightforward, not like the giant St. John's River that's nice and wide. The ICW, in spots at least, is very narrow. Like this channel right here, there's just no place to stop on either side. And really not a lot to see. But sometimes that's a good thing. This trip was uneventful. The motors held up. The new configuration for the hoses, the radiator hoses, and the motors worked out just fine. Uh, we just didn't make our destination of Jacksonville. We got close, but it was late, and we didn't want to cross the mighty entrance to the St. John's River. So we just decided to anchor up for the night. Tomorrow is another day. <clears throat> yeah, good morning. We made it. <laughs> Did not overheat. That's a wonderful thing. We're about seven miles away from the St. John's River in Jacksonville. Seems I just missed a crab pot last night. <laughs> but we're, we're anchored up. I drifted a couple of times. It was, uh, I, I had to reset about three times. It was in front of that sailboat and I thought it was going to drift into the sailboat and it went somewhere else and a whole bunch of drama. <clears throat> Anyways, we made it. And I just took the dogs to the belt ramp around the corner. They had a nice little walk. And I'm now going to take the Bass Raider up into that spot to see if I can catch fish before we move on. I need a pair of pliers just in case. Just in case I get lucky. There you go. In a lot of ways, I am lucky. Not because I caught fish, because I didn't. <laughs> Not on this particular little jaunt. Uh, I'm lucky because I got through the day without having any, any mechanical issues. We didn't run aground. The weather was nice. When both of our boats drug anchor during the night, we didn't hit anything. And when the sheriff showed up, it was because one of us <clears throat> didn't have their anchor light on. <laughs> so things could have been a lot worse. I'm also lucky because I have you guys to follow along with me. The big reason why I'm able to do this is because of you guys watching, and I appreciate you. I'll try to keep the videos coming as often as I can. This creek looks fishy. <laughs> <laughs> 